Good day and welcome back to the Vitality Project. I'm Dr. Bob. Thanks for joining me here today. I appreciate it. In our most recent posts, we've been examining some pretty difficult emotions and what we can do to manage them. We've looked at fear, we've looked at stress, anxiety, depression, but there's one more I want to look at um, in these next few posts, and that is uh, dread. We'll be wrapping up our series on managing difficult emotions by looking at dread. Oh, goody, right? <laughs> Let me give you a little bit of backdrop here. 40 years ago, in my first year of graduate school, I took a course which focused on what is called existential psychotherapy which focuses on issues of meaning and purpose and value in life. And one of our course texts was written by one of the two founders of existential philosophy. Uh, the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche is one of them, but we read a textbook by Soren Kierkegaard, who's a Danish philosopher. The title of that book was The Concept of Dread. This is 40 years ago, I read this book. And in that book, Kierkegaard, it looks like Kierkegaard, but Danes pronounce it Kierkegaard, so take your pick. Kierkegaard describes dread as that feeling of being swamped by an intense uh, reluctance or uh, a huge impulse to avoid facing something or someone. We feel dread, Kierkegaard says, when we would do anything to get out of having to deal with some situation that we're convinced isn't going to go well for us. That's dread. <clears throat> for today, what I'd like us to do is reflect on and then write down a circumstance in our own lives, whether it's meeting with a person or maybe it's some especially daunting task that, you, that you're uh, facing and it, one that you dread. I'd like you to write down the content of this dread inside of an oval, inside of a blank sheet of paper, and then around that dreaded situation that you've identified, write down a half a dozen or so thoughts and associations that arise for you when you reflect on that dread. We're going to call this a greatest dread map. And when you complete the part of uh, that I've described, writing it down and then thoughts and associations, I want you to ask yourself uh, the following questions. First of all, how does this dread make me feel? That is, on a scale of one to 10, uh, how stressed does it make me feel with 10 being stressed uh, to the max? Uh, the second question is, can I find any storylines associated with this specific dread? And we've identified two themes that come up in, uh, commonly in our storylines. One is what we call the depressor. This is something that moves me into feeling shame or self-doubt. The other is the fixer that tries to figure out some way to get rid of this feeling. And so do you, can you identify any depressor or fixy, fixer storylines? associated with the dread that you've identified. And then thirdly, and finally for right now, can you, can you identify any inner requirements, uh, which is what we're, we're calling expectations that things should be different? Can you identify any, any requirements that seem to be linked to this particular feeling of dread that you've, uh, that you've uh, noticed here? Write down what you come up with, okay? Oh, and finally, journal your self-reflections <clears throat> just for a minute or two about how doing this map, um, uh, how does it affect you? How does, how does it leave you feeling uh, in terms of maybe you feel clearer about something that has been uh, more vague or nebulous? Uh, maybe it's piqued some curiosity for you. So just anything that it opens up for you doing this exercise so far, um, write that down too. Let's see what you find, okay? I want to thank you again for joining me. We'll be picking up with this greatest dread map in our very next post with something that can maybe help us move through dread, okay? Uh, between now and when I see you next, please stay safe, be well, and I look forward to your joining me again soon.